Hey guys, it's Max and Jared from The Property Collective. In today's Ask the Expert session, we've got Max joining us today to talk about all things we see on the front line. So in terms of what we see on the front line, there are a lot of questions that prospective landlords will start to ask us. I guess one of the big things we find is conversations around price and what their property is worth and how we go about achieving that sort of price. What importance does that have in terms of getting a result for the prospective landlord? Absolutely. I think it's you know really important to do it right the first time instead of constantly revising it um, weeks on end down the, the track of the campaign. You know, so there's many things that us BDs look for. Well, a really good BD will look for when pricing a property. What we do is we take recent case studies or what us real estate agents call a comparative market analysis of what's uh, on the market, how long it's been on the market for, how long it took to rent, you know, if we need to border into recent suburbs, um, whether you know, what other suburbs are seeing uh, from a results perspective. There's just many things that go involved to provide sufficient enough evidence to the landlord that we can come to an agreement on price. And as you would agree with me, you know, it's in everybody's best interest to achieve the best price possible. But the most important thing is to be realistic about it, because, of course, that mainly is going to de determine how long a property is going to be on the market for. Awesome. Totally agree. And when we do a comparative market analysis, generally, how far back would we look at the comparable data? So if there's something we're getting ready to go on the market within the next one to two weeks, in terms of what's historically rented, how far back would we usually go? Depends on the property, but in, in my experience and my expert opinion, I would say I wouldn't look any more than, say, four weeks past for rentals. And the reason why I say that, and from recent case studies and examples, is if I'm looking at certain properties in certain areas from what we're experiencing now compared to, you know, more than a month ago, it's a completely different conversation. So, you know, it's really important to, of course, gather recent case studies and recent evidence to provide to the landlord uh, in order to come to an agreement of price. Excellent. So what you're saying is the most recent data is probably the stuff we need to be looking at most closely. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. And in terms of getting a property ready for rent, there's often a lot of questions around, should I spend money on this? Is there anything that I need to do to get the property ready for rent? Are there any areas that you see a business development manager adding value to in part of that process, getting it ready for rent? Absolutely. I think it's really important, like in my case, uh, whenever I meet my landlords for the initial consultation is to walk around the property, ask questions like what needs to be done? What's, you know, what needs ongoing care? So when it comes to getting a property ready for rent, some people start to engage us once they've bought a new property or once that decision's been made. I've seen a lot of examples where we can actually build value throughout the process leading up many months or even years before someone decides to buy an investment property or make their current property an investment. What sort of advice or things do we offer in that space that you think add some value along the way? Absolutely. Um, I think that a really good BD won't just, you know, partake in the real estate transaction side of things, but, you know, we'll go into the deep end of the finances and, you know, we're not accountants or we're not financial advisors, but we're there to help people purchase property and property for the near future, because that's going to obviously help us generate more business and, of course, keep hold relationships for longer periods of time. So what I like to do as a BD is offer my clients a cash flow analysis, and I do it religiously. I, I do offer at least, well, every landlord that is interested to understanding how their investment property is going to be performing, and it's a, such a simple document that will essentially state people's ingoings and outgoings and what their gearing status is. And um, it's something that's completely free. It's something that they won't need to seek, you know, independent financial advice for. It's something that we're building value to. And I feel as if it's so empowering to be able to disclose that type of information to a landlord to understand where they are in the current market. Because they may look at that and say, right, I know that my ingoings and outgoings are a certain amount. And I know in two years time, I may be able to purchase property from now. Absolutely. And I think there's a few other things to extend off the back of that. I know I've worked with clients over the years who uh, are looking to use our experience in terms of what makes for a good investment property, what the rental estimate might be for the proposed purchase, how long that proposed purchase might take to rent for. Are those some of the things that we can also help with, you think, and add value over that um, duration? Absolutely. I think when in, when you're purchasing any type of property, there's there's three light things that I like to call the pie, or if you'd like a piece of pie, and that's pie. 
population, infrastructure, and employment. You know, where I am, obviously, you know, population, infrastructure, and employment um, is skyrocketing. So when looking, you know, at purchasing property, you know, it's really important to understand, to know who's in the area, what's in the area, what's developing, developing in the area. And of course, from an employment perspective of, you know, what the demographic is uh, in that area, whether that be public servants, defense or DFAT workers or retail precincts, uh, major retail precincts, for instance, it's, um, yeah, there's a lot to consider, but when you base off three scenarios, I would highly suggest going off the pie analogy. Yeah, awesome. Good way to look at it. And I guess in terms of where we add value, where you've got interstate clients who are looking at purchasing in different markets that we operate in. Um, I know we offer pre-purchase inspection reports. What sort of stuff do we go through when we're looking at a pre-purchase uh, inspection report or a pre-settlement report? Absolutely. You know, these are really, really important um, to conduct before the settlement of the property occurs. And the value and the reason why that we at the Property Collective offer this service is to walk through your either apartment, house or townhouse and identify any cosmetic or structural imperfections on the property. Because before you move in, obviously, the developer has a 90 day defect period where they need to rectify any defects. And, you know, whether there be 10 defects or 40 defects, there's a lot of things that I'm looking for and as a BD building value to in the clients to make sure that I have their best interests in mind. And as part of us providing rental estimates on proposed purchases, is that something you often get asked about how to calculate rental yields? Absolutely. Yep, excellent. And is that something that we could potentially assist a prospective landlord in calculating and working out what either the gross or the net yield would be on their proposed purchase? Absolutely. And I think it's for us, um, you know, we have all the, you know, a good agency will, of course, provide all the, the tools and resources in place to do that. And for, for instance, something like for, for my situation, it's about a 10 minute task, but provides so much value uh, in the long term grand schemes of things. And it's that above and beyond uh, factor to, towards it. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And I guess one thing that I often get asked about is tax depreciation reports. And for a lot of people, um, they haven't had anyone sit down and explain the benefits of it. If you were to put that in simple terms, why would we recommend someone getting a tax depreciation report done on their property? Absolutely. One, the cost is tax deductible. And two, the value of this report is over time in a property, whether that be new or semi-new, obviously everything has a set value. So for instance, your um, kitchen appliances, your oven may be worth X, but over time, it depreciates uh, in price. And that report for the next five years is going to help you maximise your tax return. So on a weekly basis, Max, we often get inquiries from prospective landlords who are either unhappy with their current agency or are simply shopping around to see if there is a better solution to manage what is probably their biggest asset. What have we done to really streamline that process and how do we take away any of the pain points or friction when it comes to transitioning someone's property from another agency over to the property collective? That's a really good question, actually, because a lot of our um, questions towards management takeovers is how simple is the process? And at the property collective, we are really fortunate to have a really streamlined process that is all digital, digital. It makes the other agencies lives so much easier. It makes our lives so much easier and it makes for a smooth transition. You know, we have a software in place that the other agency will be able to upload uh, the previous inspection, uh, condition reports, routines, um, ledgers, bonds transfer forms. It's just all the documentation comes to us um, and essentially we load it in and we'll take over from the start of um, the month. Um, so it just makes it everything so much more streamlined than say dumping off a, you know, a phone book thick text log <laughs> of papers that need to be scanned in. Uh, we're really fortunate to have such a streamlined way of doing it. Yeah, and it's probably important you make mention of the start of the month because again, where we're taking over properties from other agencies, some people may exercise a 30 day notice period, but with good conversation and structuring around timing, we can sometimes reduce that 30 days to an earlier period if that start of the month is actually coming ahead of the 30 days. So we're looking at trying to position the most logical time to transition that property and through the collection of all of that information, enable us to sort of pick up the ball and keep running with it from there to ensure that one, the landlord is now receiving a better service, but two, making sure the tenants are aware of the changes in that process. And really the only thing that's changing in their world 
is one, they've got a new point of contact, and secondly, where the rent is being paid to. So all things remain the same in the tenant's world. And that's probably a misconception where landlords are a bit fearful of transitioning, feeling that it might impact their tenants. Is that something that you get questioned about? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And what is the process for us when we do take on a new management in terms of how we engage that tenant? Absolutely. Look, it's um, a nice home and it's full. Um, what we're really fortunate to have with the property collective is a, a designated relationship manager um, who will maintain a relationship from tenant to landlord. Um, that phone call essentially is um, agreed to saying, hey, I'm in your point of contact. Um, we'll then set them up on their direct debit system, which means that you know we're in control of collecting the rent and they know that. And they have peace of mind that they know who to communicate with. What's also really nice about working with us is we also have our own in-house trades team. And you know we've invested a lot of money um, into systems that make the tenant's life so much easier, whether that be financially inquiry related or trades and maintenance related. So that initial point of contact is setting the standard and the clear lines of communication really clear with them. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time, Max. It's been awesome catching up and look forward Absolutely. to um, working with you on some more questions in the weeks to come. Awesome. And if anybody's out there that would like to have that free and non-commitment discussion with me towards management takeovers or understanding how your investment property is performing um, in this market, I would love to be able to help.